Well, today I'm going to put a Big Mac under the microscope and in order to do that, well, I first have to buy one, of course. So let's go to Mac Drive. Well, look at this. This is a little bit like a Christmas and I think it's my first Big Mac ever. I don't remember having eaten any Big Macs before. Uh, let's start right away and I want to put the sesame that is on the bun. I want to put that under the microscope first. Specimen preparation is quite easy. I cut a piece off, uh, cover glass on top and then pressure, pressure with your thumb. This squashes the sesame seed uh, apart and uh, the cells become a very fine and thin layer. And here we are. These are the cells, the little boxes that you see. These are the cells of the sesame uh, seed. Yeah, by the way, I did forget to introduce myself and to say hi. Hi, Micro Hunter here. And uh, I hope uh, that this video where I put a, a hamburger under the microscope, I hope uh, that this one is also uh, quite fun for you. The cells of the sesame seed, well, uh, they are quite regular and quite nicely visible, of course, are the cell walls. But let's go on a little bit. Here, the bun itself, how does this look under the microscope? Well, it is a dry piece of bread. So what I had to do is I had to soak it in a little bit of water. And of course, I know that the bun itself, um, it's quite homogenous, pretty boring to look at, most likely. So I decided to make it a little bit more exciting and I decided I wanted to stay test for starch. So I added a little bit of iodine under the uh, microscope slide and under the cover glass. Please be careful when you do this yourself. Iodine is quite corrosive and when it touches the microscope parts, it can actually damage them. And what you can see is that the, as the iodine soaks in into the bread, it starts to uh, color those parts black where there is starch. Because of course there's lots of starch inside the bun, therefore of course it immediately colors black. You can see here how this iodine diffuses into the bread. This here is a little bit of a time lapse so I had to make it run faster so that you can see actually how the iodine soaks in into the bun and does the iodine and starch reaction making it black. Well here again that's basically how it looks like after a couple of uh, minutes um, of diffusion. Yeah of course every uh, hamburger must have a little cucumber. Um, that's the next thing that I put under the microscope and the cucumber was green on the outside so I suppose this is due to chlorophyll and chloroplast. So maybe I'm a little bit lucky uh, to see those under the microscopes as well. Here too I took a little part of the skin of the cucumber I compressed it uh, using um, uh, cover glass uh, and my thumb of course and then I did see again a couple of cells I think not quite as nice as those of the sesame seed uh, but nevertheless I could see those green parts those green structures inside the cells um, and uh, these must be chloroplasts for photosynthesis of course. Um, yeah and what I've done next is I also added a little bit of methylene blue which is a stain and I also wanted to see how this this stain reacts with the cells um, and uh, indeed uh, there is a little bit of a staining reaction and the parts some parts inside the cell start uh, to stain as well and this increases and improves the contrast a little bit so yeah next thing is of course uh, the actual meat itself now this is again a little bit a tricky one uh, because uh, it's shredded meat of course um, so I decided a new method I tried to, to dip uh, the meat into a drop uh, of water and to dissolve the parts and then for the first time I could see actually some round structures and these round structures these are fat droplets. Um, so these fat droplets of course do not mix with the surrounding water and that's why you see those little round spherical shapes uh, fat droplets of all different sizes of course of a lot of other stuff is of course present as well but those fat droplets I think are quite easily observable and can be seen uh, quite well. As a matter of fact um, there are probably so many different uh, substances in a hamburger that it's almost impossible to identify them but some of them like those fat droplets um, yeah these are very common and recurring uh, little uh, structures that you find uh, quite often. So yeah what else uh, is uh, there to put under the microscope of course a little bit of salad here. Uh, this one actually was a little bit almost ended in a little bit of a disaster I have to admit. I'm going to show you just in a second. Um, I tried to uh, tear off the surface 
surface of, of the salad. So to put the epidermis, which is the outermost layer, most layer of the leaf, I wanted to put that under the microscope. But so it took uh, quite a bit of patience. And then I also wanted to stain it with methylene blue. And this is where I nearly, um, yeah, it, it nearly uh, ended up in a disaster because look what happened. Uh, I actually placed some methylene blue on there and it went between the objective and the cover glass. It should go beneath it, but it was on top of it. So I immediately had to clean it away with some lens paper. Uh, those objectives are expensive. Uh, I was already worried that I maybe have ruined the objective, but uh, I unmounted it and checked it. Everything's fine. I was a little bit lucky again. So from now on, I'm going to be significantly more careful. Um, it's only methylene blue. I think iodine is a little bit more aggressive in that, in that respect. So yeah, I basically I tried it again. I put it back. Well, of course, as expected, many cells again, lots of cells. Uh, the cell walls are again uh, quite well visible. I read somewhere that a few hundred years ago when they started with microscopy, scientists were mostly interested in the cell wall. Well, that doesn't surprise me because the cell wall is one of the easiest things to observe. But then all of a sudden I saw a very interesting round structure, oval structure here, and I knew it. Ha! These are so-called stomates, and stomates are openings in a leaf um, which uh, are allow for gas exchange because leaves do photosynthesis so carbon dioxide from the air is able to go into the leaf through those little openings uh, inside um, the leaf and these are called the stomates and here right now I see again uh, the blue um, yeah the blue methylene blue uh, which nicely stains the edges um, of uh, the salad um, and of course I was quite interested in finding more of these uh, stomates and, I and, and, and indeed I was successful there were quite a, quite a few of them on the leaf and if you look carefully you can see them some of them scattered around but again here the methylene blue slowly starts to diffuse in and starts uh, to stain the cells and this again increases and improves the contrast and uh, some parts uh, stain stronger others less strong and this basically um, allows you to see details that are otherwise not quite easily visible yeah here again a couple of uh, stomates yeah so let's uh, flip uh, the meat uh, over um, and let's uh, continue our search for some interesting parts in the hamburger and I did find something uh, some white uh, cube shaped little structures at the beginning I didn't know what they are but I think these are onions as a matter of fact um, yeah so I decided that that's an easy one uh, onions are quite easily observable so I put uh, a piece of onion under the microscope um, as well um, I've already made several videos about onions and because the onion skin can be observed quite easily unfortunately here I was not able to get the onion skin so I had to do a little bit of, uh, of cutting and uh, the little piece of onion itself uh, was also yeah luckily small enough uh, to see the individual cells often uh, the structures are so big that you don't see the cells because they stack on top of each other and they're too difficult to see yeah of course it goes under the microscope uh, I um, again added a little bit of methylene blue being, being extremely careful not uh, to touch uh, the objective in this uh, case allowed the methylene blue to again uh, flow beneath uh, the cover glass um, and uh, yeah I've done this quite often because I wanted simply to see how the different uh, plant materials actually react uh, with the stain of course very typical for onions um, again uh, very large and thick uh, cell walls um, visible um, and uh, of course uh, I was a little bit disappointed that uh, the, I was not able to see the nice a regular structure of the cells that you normally use that I'm used to see when I usually put some onion skin under the microscope but okay it's fine um, it's uh, as if after all um, I did have to prepare it a little bit using my scissors and this was quite difficult to do here again you see that the, the methylene blue starts to stain the, um, the cell walls um, and again it looks uh, looks quite nice uh, yeah under the microscope uh, there's not much left of the hamburger <laughs> doesn't look like a hamburger at all of course but still fascinating how many natural products you're still able to find in food well of course uh, food is after all a natural product or should be and uh, all the vegetables there of course are fresh plant materials and therefore they're an interesting source uh, to do a little bit of biology the cheese the cheese this cheese um, again a homogeneous uh, yeah material that means the individual cells not visible mostly coagulated protein um, so again my hopes were not very high to find anything interesting um, I again compressed it and mm, unfortunately this did not quite uh, work out quite well because the cover glass cracked so what do we learn from that uh, take very very 
small samples uh, that can be compressed and easily and do it carefully. You don't want to hurt yourself uh, with uh, yeah, the broken glass. I put it under the microscope, looks a little bit like modern art. Um, very irregular shapes, of course no cells visible because it's all milk protein and yeah, relatively random shape of course. But I could also see some expanding bubbles where the cheese, which was uh, essentially connected to the glass slide, started to separate and that's why you could actually see more and more of these bubbles uh, that are growing. Yeah, I think a uh, nice piece of modern art and when you hang it up in your a wall on your wall in the picture frame you can have other people guess what this is nobody no, nobody will guess that it's actually the cheese of a hamburger yeah and finally i worked my, myself layer, layer by layer worked myself downwards and on the very bottom i did finally find the hamburger sauce and this one was quite easy to actually observe um, and uh, because it's of course very soft and almost liquid and therefore um, it's also very easy to press it into a very thin layer no, and therefore uh, the shapes that I expect are probably again going to be quite clear and transparent. Uh, I was actually hoping for that and luckily I was not disappointed um, because I could see as expected that the sauce, the hamburger sauce is an emulsion and again we see those round structures which are fat droplets suspended in water. It's an emulsion, you know, just like uh, many creams are. Um, quite, uh, quite also nice to see um, that uh, those uh, little drops are so small that they actually are not able to easily recombine um, into larger droplets. Um, and yeah, so that's uh, basically the hamburger sauce um, under the microscope. Um, and uh, even though the hamburger sauce did have a slightly yellowish color, maybe they added a little bit of egg uh, yolk to it. Uh, wouldn't surprise me still because the layer was so thin, individual colors are not visible. And then of course, last but not least, the french fry and here again uh, I did a little starch reaction and uh, the starch reaction uh, was again done by adding a little bit of iodine and here you see all of the nine little dishes nine little samples I've taken here and uh, I've now put the french fry under the microscope by taking some of the soft central part not the crunchy outside but the soft central part I took a little bit of that out um, and put it on the slide I did not add any water yet um, but uh, then again did an iodine reaction with that and I could of course as expect also see that the starch started to turn black due to the reaction. Um, yeah, here we go. Again, very careful. Again, I don't recommend that you do that uh, directly um, on the microscope stage because as I mentioned, the iodine is very corrosive. Here, these that's the starch, that's the French fry. And uh, when you add the iodine, then it immediately turns uh, the surrounding yellow, but the starch uh, turns pitch black. So you will just be able to see this in just a, a second. On the right side, you see this iodine coming. But of course, uh, French fries are originally potatoes. If you take a raw potato and put it into the microscope, then the starch grains really appear very nicely and very round in oval shapes, much more regular than what you see here. But here, the starch, as I promised, uh, black. So the next thing is, of course, you have to eat the hamburger as well. And that's what I've done. Uh, of course, I did not throw anything away. And of course, everything had to be eaten. Yeah, and I did enjoy my first uh, Big Mac. I have to tell you that. Um, and yeah, I don't know when, when the next time is gonna be when I eat the Big Mac, but also first the work, then the food. I had to clean up all of the mess um, in my home lab, of course, um, it's, but still. Quite, uh, quite interesting uh, to see um, what a hamburger is able to reveal under the microscope. Well, just discovered that eating a thick hamburger like this isn't even as difficult as I anticipated. Yeah, it actually does fit into my mouth. Yeah, of course, at this time, I would like to also thank my patron supporters and also my GoFundMe supporters for making this channel possible. If you're interested in amateur microscopy, hobby microscopy, do check out the links that I've collected below. I've also put some links to um, microscope recommendations where I did some microscope reviews. And I have a sister channel which uh, uh, where it talks mostly about uh, microscope hardware and uh, buying advice. So plenty of information there. Uh, also an affiliate web shop. Uh, if you want to support the channel, visit that web shop. It, uh, this way I can earn a little bit of uh, small pocket money to support the channel and then I can buy more products uh, where I can do a microscope review. I would like to wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. See you around next time and bye bye.